Good day, folks. I just would like to do an update on the progress on the research. I know this is going fast lately and I've been releasing videos after another, but because I've been doing so many findings and the information is so important, this is how I document everything. It's my style anyways. So with that said, uh, at first I was talking about the generics of the solid state electrolytes versus the non-solid state. But without pinpointing specifically what was going on with these cells, with further research, I'm now able to better explain what is going on. And I had a hunch, but I couldn't flat out, you know, I don't like making things up without first confirming, you know. So um, sure enough, um, people were saying at first, you know, ah, oh, this is going to wear out when it dries. It's a moisture base. It uses the moisture in the air. And I get that logic. And actually, the Zamboni pile is based on this concept. Well, it uses the moisture of the air. But the problem with this, folks, is you need a very, very thin, a piece of paper, extremely thin to be able to do that. And, it, and even with the paper, it has a hard time. It's a very, very weak effect and you need to stack hundreds of them to start really noticing it. So with that said, looking at this design, you know there's like an inch between the cathode and the anode and I'm going, you know, this is hard rock and even with moisture, this would be very hard to, to even get the uh, volts we're getting here. So to confirm that it wasn't that, I, um, I cooked it in the oven for about, um, oh, I'd say 15 minutes. To make sure the water, you know, is completely evaporated, and to my surprise, I noticed that it turns into a um, a wax-like structure, and then as it cools down, hardens back into rock. So once it hardened, I did the test, and again, I got the same voltage. So that confirmed to me that um, it's not primarily, anyways, a um, water fluid based electron flow so this brings us down to either three possibilities the um, uh, basically an electrostatic reaction or quantum tunneling and the two of them uh, as vague as it is it's still quite difficult to pinpoint so i said you know what it's vague and i had a hunch that you know what there might be an electric like effect going on here and let me explain as we mix the electrolyte in its primary and its non-solid state and at the time there's water so there's an ion flow and electron flow with the help of the electrolyte and the moisture the water so what i'm getting at is primarily i think this thing is actually a self-conditioning electric and once it's hardening, the reason that we're in, in, in this configuration anyway is that I'm able to um, still get that 1.1 volt or so is because it's actually the self, it, as it hardened, it, you know what I'm getting at, it's self, it's self initiated an electrode effect as it hardened. So now it's the electrode that's kicking in. So of course, to confirm that, you know, as silly as I am, I went and put the oven on again and 15 minutes gets into a wax-like substance. And what I did this time is I put my two connections on my, on my cathodes and my anodes, carefully opened up the freezer, put that in the freezer, closed the door, fed 12 volts into it for about 20 minutes as it cooled really really quick shock cooled it as i charged it so conditioning as, as an electric but at much weaker voltage because you know i don't want to start off with thousands of volts just on this experiment but to start with you know i figured 12 volts was good enough and sure enough this is the one i did and it cooled right back hard and now it's at room temperature waited a few minutes for it to come back at room temperature and sure enough, an increase of several uh, hundreds of microvolts. So all of a sudden, I'm reading almost two volts in the cell, and it's been holding pretty good all uh, night. So this is basically confirming, you know, that it's most likely primary anyways, a um, electret effect once it cools down anyways. And the reason it stays to that near voltage, because it's the voltage we can conditioned it internally at. But we can enhance that and that's what I'm getting at is if you want these cells, those who have been making them, 
try that very low temperature in the oven for about 15 minutes until it gets back into a wax substance then put it in the freezer and shock charge it as it cools down and it really really seems to enhance the um, output of these cells so what i'm getting at is i think this is a way of making electrodes as well so pretty cool stuff um, so i'm gonna leave it at that just thought i'd share with you the findings so far and um, who knows, maybe one day this is something I could actually build and sell because I don't want to get everyone excited now, but you know, if I could figure out a way to pack these well so they don't break, it's a good experimentation because um, I've noticed a lot of effects so far from a lot of transient uh, AC fluctuations internally going on in here. Uh, I'm not sure about the piezoelectric effects yet. I gave it a few whacks, it did something. So that's still to be studied. Um, lots of unusual effects anyways with this solid state electrolyte. And it is active research development. If you read up on the electrolyte I'm, I'm working on, we still don't have all the answers. So there's a reason why they're actively researching it because there's probably still secrets to be um, found in all of this. So with that said, I'm going to let you folks uh, ponder with that. And again, let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. So you guys must be wondering, you know, where am I going with all this? Here I was experimenting with Bedini's and Don Smith's and everything in between and quantum energy generators. And it looked like I was doing a lot of progress with that. And suddenly I'm playing with these cells and quantum energy and whatnot. But believe it or not, folks, those who have been following me for a while is trying to find natural systems where we can tap into natural potentials. And I really thought that there's something there. And uh, others have experimented in this field, Bedini, John Hutchinson, uh, even Floyd in his own ways, and probably even more race. So, I mean, and even probably more in between. So there's definitely something there. And my point is, and I am going somewhere with this, folks, because let's think a little bit here. If this is working the way I think it's working and we can charge these electrodes and supercharge them and condition our cells, what this means is in order to get, you know, the uh, hundred and some thousand volts, we might not need a hundred thousand plates. We might be able to condition them and bring the voltage up drastically. We might be able to double, triple and whatnot, the efficiency of a single cell by taking advantage of the electrode effect and conditioning that. So can you imagine moving on back to, let's say, a Don Smith device, which is basically a glorified magnetic amplifier, where we um, basically set up a system, whether through a Tesla coil or other means of a high voltage generator at high frequency on the uh, high frequency side, which gets modulated by the uh, low frequency side of a transformer. So what that does is essentially a small um, inverter that runs off at 12 volts modulates at 60 hertz. So what you get is you're, you're modulating the... Um, high frequency at 60 hertz so you're creating a displacement at that frequency and that creates a compatible current that the load would see at that um, frequency with the field minus the filtering and all that but my point is folks imagine if you could for a moment scrap the Tesla coil scrap the high voltage generator all of the, the, the big parts you know half of the Kappa Gen coil, all that gone, and all you need is this cell on one side of the magnetic amplifier and the modulator on the other side, which might run by, you know, a motorcycle battery or something, and that might run for a month. Can you imagine if it's like 100,000 volts and we don't actually need to run a generator for that, and we actually essentially pulse the cell, right? You know? Um, and by the way, this works with DC. You can modulate DC. It creates something called displacement currents. So um, just thought I'd put that out there. Um, so yes, I am trying to go somewhere with all this, folks. But it's one step at a time and resources and everything. But you got to experiment and test the concepts first to see if there's at least something there. And I really think this solid state electrolyte, it's 
there's something there it's being researched as for a reason it's an active development and the they're considering it for building new generation batteries, but that's what it is. They're considering it. it's in research. So we may have a step up in all of this, folks. So have yourselves all a great day.